All right. Yat Ebene, good morning, all across Navajo land. We appreciate you chiming in with us here uh, on this January 27th uh, COVID-19 town hall update. So uh, let us get started. We do apologize for getting started a little late, but uh, we have a lot of data, a lot of information uh, from uh, uh, myself, President, and all of our um, uh, Navajo Department of Health uh, colleagues, the uh, um, health professionals, and the like. So let's get started as we do always uh, open up with prayer. And I'll give my update and then pass it off to President Jonathan Nez. So, yeah, the end, God. Thank you, Lord, for another day of life. Thank you for uh, your protection, Lord, and your wisdom, Father. We ask that you uh, continue to be vigilant and watch over your people, Lord, here on our land, Lord, land that you've uh, uh, set aside for us. Lord, we thank you that uh, we can come to you, Father, for all things, your provision in your hand, Father, and even your reproof, Lord. We uh, th are thankful, Lord, for moisture, the, the snow, uh, the beautiful uh, scenery, Father, Lord, uh, during planting season, it will be uh, great for um, for those that plant, Father, that return back to the land, Lord, we thank you. We're just grateful. Lord, we uh, ask you to be with us in this town hall meeting, Lord. Uh, may it be a blessing for the people, Lord. May they use the information and data and run with it, Father. And be safe and continue to uh, hearken the message, Lord, uh, to be vigilant and safe out there, Lord. We'll work like it depends on us, but we'll pray like it depends on you, Father God. Thank you. Thank you. Yet, dear God, all need God. We give you praise and all the honor that's to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, again, uh, we thank you for uh, viewing with us, all our visitors and watchers there on the Town Hall uh, live Facebook feed. Uh, I'll get started this morning. Uh, and then we have uh, up next our president, Jonathan Niz, uh, will be uh, getting uh, on. And then uh, all of our health professionals here, uh, IHS, uh, our Navajo Department of Health, and, and, and others, our EPI team. So we've got a lot of information for you, as we always do. So uh, first and foremost, uh, the latest from the state of Arizona and New Mexico and Utah. As you know, uh, even though we, we don't uh, 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 want you all to travel out there, we know that because uh, people need to know the latest information out there. Uh, we always get it from um, our our health professionals here, uh, our EPI team and our head health command operations center, uh, all the latest uh, Navajo Nation data, but we also have the need to know uh, the surrounding areas uh, uh, Arizona, the metropolitan area, and also uh, Al um, New Mexico and um, Albuquerque, and uh, the same for Utah. So um, total positive cases since March, 738,561 for Arizona, with total deaths at 12,643. New cases, uh, new positive cases, 5,918. Um, so we're seeing a, a downward trend. Uh, we've seen those numbers pretty high uh, within the last month here. And so these numbers, uh, uh, although high still, are are trending downward. So we continue to be vigilant and remain watchful over all the state's data. Um, there are 195 new deaths to report in uh, Arizona again. And uh, uh, drilling down a little bit more uh, specifically, Apache County, uh, total positive cases, 9,388 with 300 total deaths here to report since March with uh, 105 new cases of uh, COVID-19 positives and uh, two additional deaths to report there. Navajo County, uh, total 14,149 total positive cases with uh, 419 uh, um, uh, total deaths with 29 new positive cases to report and one additional death. Coconino County rounding out the last of the counties that uh, uh, Navajo Nation touches in Arizona, northeastern Arizona. 14,959 total positive cases since March with uh, 266 uh, total deaths. Uh, we have uh, 65 new positive cases as of yesterday and uh, two additional deaths to report. So that rounds out Arizona. New Mexico, uh, we did have new development yesterday. Um, Governor Michelle Duhon Grisham gave her state of the state uh, address in Santa Fe. And um, this is, uh, again, as of yesterday, she will be allowing uh, schools to reopen their doors to students of all ages, which 
is a major pullback of the recent restrictions that were based on country level COVID-19 cases, uh, case rates and uh, hospitality, uh, hospital uh, capacity. So um, they're uh, gonna be um, allowing schools to reopen as of February 8th that 50% students stay at home 50%. And so that's the latest there. Uh, of course, President Nez and I and uh, HCOC, we're recommending that our students still be uh, virtual, uh, meeting virtually. Um, we know it's a hardship, but we're knowing also that we wish to protect our, our citizens and our students as well. So uh, again, uh, this is a uh, ever-changing uh, um, um, status in, in New Mexico. So I continue to watch and, and be <clears throat> um, notified with the, the reports. And this is a great way to do it on this uh, town hall update. So but that's the latest from the state of New Mexico. Um, we also have, um, uh, you know, the, the pressing need, and I know many of our families out there uh, that don't have internet, you know, and many of our students lacked internet from the summer into December, this present time, January, including those without electricity, they suffered the most in the pursuit of their education. So there are some uh, some uh, hardships that our people are undergoing and we're working with leadership here on Navajo Nation to change all that. And so continued prayers from all of you out there and those that are affected. Uh, uh, we, you know, again, we are all in this together and uh, we're looking for, uh, uh, the, the best remedy uh, going forward. Also, uh, school sports, uh, just an update for New Mexico, have a, a possibility to resume on February 22nd. So again, I'm looking at numbers and uh, surges and, and whatnot. So that's just the latest right now. Uh, we're, we're, uh, we're seeing here on our information feed. Uh, New Mexico, total positive cases, 170,296 since March with 3,171 deaths to report again uh, since March with uh, new cases in the total state, the whole state of New Mexico at 602 with 14 new deaths to report statewide again, Dr a, a deeper drill down San Juan County, 12,706 total cases ever since uh, March with 52 new positive cases to report. And rounding out New Mexico and Navajo, uh, Gallup McKinley County total positive cases stands at 11,315 with uh, 36 new cases. Uh, lastly, the great state of Utah here, uh, we do have 338,675 total positive cases with 1,613 deaths there. Uh, doing a, a deeper dive here, San Juan County with 1,739, this is Utah again, um, 1,739 total positive cases with 36 total deaths to report. And uh, Navajo Nation, uh, the reservation, the Utah Navajo Health System uh, is reporting uh, positive cases at 1,030. So as you know, as I round out that and close my portion of this uh, uh, January 27th town hall update here is every Navajo citizen here on Navajo, we need to work together to stop the spread. And you all know, uh, there's a lot of news. It's, it, it seems to be ever changing, new strains, new variants coming out. It's, it's great to be uh, knowledgeable and, and just, um, you know, continue to wear your mask, uh, uh, wear your, your, your surgical mask, N95s, KN95s, uh, a double up. Uh, that's always safe. So, you know, it's been well chronicled as I've traveled out, double up, double up. But again, at home, I mean, you're shopping, double up still. Uh, they have the net gators and whatnot. So again, I uh, look forward to uh, hearing uh, health updates on what our health professionals are advising us to do. So uh, we can stop the spread of COVID-19. Those of you, and there's many across the, the Netra that uh, have not contracted the virus. What have you been doing? What have you done? Continue to be supportive of the messaging, but also you know, uh, continue to hearken that needed message and, and practice what the uh, public health emergency orders are stipulating for us, and we will continue to be safe. So please stay at home, especially if you're feeling sick, wear a mask uh, or face covering when in public and around others. Uh, get vaccinated, uh, that the vaccinations at which we'll receive more updates from those uh, for your family and your community and be healthy and safe. That's what we advocate for. And as these vaccines are being rolled out, uh, go to the Napa Department of Health website for the latest schedule 
and uh, those are happening here even today and, and the next day and through the weekend. Uh, this latest public uh, health emergency order had uh, allowed for um, the uh, vaccines to be implemented in the arms of our people on Saturday and Sunday. So keep, please keep updated, uh, KTNN. Uh, this uh, fine uh, 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 platform, social media, there'll be updates being constantly rolled out. So, and then um, continue to buy Navajo by local, the Neslizer campaign as we've uh, pushed it forward. And it's been highly successful even in, in this pandemic, but we know our people still travel abroad and especially this message needs to be uh, magnified and hearkened ever more loudly and uh, ever more uh, uh, by all is uh, the fact that we have uh, the COVID relief funds that have come. Um, the people across the land are receiving it. Um, uh, the um, um, recent omnibus bill that President Trump signed that uh, was afforded the, the people uh, per the IRS uh, uh, additional money. So that hit your your bank account or your check came in the mail. And then the um, Navajo Nation is rolling out its own relief funds. Uh, those have hit the banks and uh, uh, the checks have been issued uh, just recently this week. And so we'll probably hear some updates from President Niz. So what I'm saying is we have money and we have financial resources and our people are, are almost conditioned. We're we're trained uh, to to do just go to the border towns and to buy buy buy. We're advocating for you to save save save. Please save for a rainy day. Buy Navajo, buy local. Limit your travel. Stay here and support our Navajo Nation businesses. We all win. We all win. Um, not much more needs to be said about that. But it's a campaign we continue to push out there and messaging. It's very important. Um, so, as you know, healthy customers mean healthy employees and a healthy economy. And we've always felt that we can open up and recover safely in our own Navajo Nation economy. And we're continuing to advocate for that at every uh, point that we can. Uh, to increase um, the consumer mobility, increases consumer spending. Again, uh, stay home, stay safe, save lives, be smart and be safe and be strong. And uh, some. Uh, um, um, I guess recent uh, messaging that I've adopted in my life is uh, uh, you know always be humble and kind and uh, send that message out to you. There's a great song out there. Listen to it and, and make it yours. Uh, always be humble and kind. But uh, we appreciate um, you all. We're praying for you all from the office of the president, vice president, first and second ladies, continuing to support important uh, messaging that's out there that's always fortified with data and knowledge and uh, backed by our uh, public health uh, officials and our, our professionals. So, again, we're all in this together. I am the Vice President, Comanche Nishle, Tolhana Bashis Chin Do Comanche Dashiche Ashdi It has been good to be with you here on this uh, January 27th town hall update. And so, without further ado, President Jonathan Nez is awaiting standing by to uh, give you his latest updates so how going to all of you out there be safe and uh, ladies and gentlemen the president of the navajo nation jonathan Nez. take it away sir good good morning to everybody thank you uh, vice president for the prayer and oh. also the uh, updates she got taught as a taggy. Cannot walk a yahoo in it was to how Zoji or to how Zoji. A Aja Nashnigi Jo a Aja a ya Daltidia, the Quilla and Elte Asaja, the Tatorna Niki Jo a con yahoo in it. Nishid the Nebuke of a car or ya a ya Sabitin over a. Sepi-enel-tau-edi-asla-ajj-na-na-din-din-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel-kiel
የቄን ይነዲ አ ይጻ ዲኒጨ እና ወልተ እንሽ ናስቴ ነዝነቲ ዶባ ናስቴ ዶባ ሽላ ነልታው ኢኮ ይቄን ይነ ይብጻዶ አዳጅተ አኮ ኢ ይጆባ ኢንሽ ኬች ኬን ሲኒ ቁዶ ጄዳ ስትልቶ በነታ ስትል ቄዳን ለንጊ አሽሆነ ባጽው ዲል ዘንዶ ነል ባጽው ዶልጽ አዶ ኮምባ እንደው ይልነቲ ሸዳ ነሰን አሽን ሶንታ ነሰን ኢባሽሽቺ ትወደጪኒ ኢዳሽቺዶ ትከቺኒ ኢዳሽናል ሶ ያደን ሂዲኒ ዶልጽ ዶዲ ኮን ዳጻስ ተነብኬ አፖካዶ እንደስተ ዶለቶ ዲን ራይ ኢላዳ ሶባን ሶስከስ ኩዶ ዳዳስ ቲስ ዳዲ ነነ አ ኮ ዳጻስ ዶ ከሺ አሽ ቶን ዳዶ ትለሽ ንሽሊ ፓ አኮንደ ዲ ናስ ንሂጊ አንዲ ኮንደ ነ ቢኪ አፍካኦን ንኻስቸን አጅ ብና ንሽዴስ አንዲ ኮና ስኒ ሆደ ጆዘ ባዝኒ ታኖ ባይልቲ አኮንደ ዶይ አስቆ ይቄን ይነ ባዳ አስትደ ዘ አሮ ጨኮዳሊያ በኒናጊ ዋሽንግተን ዘ ጨኮንደ ይል ኤንክስ ፓርዝ ቶላዳ አኮንደ አኮይቺ ኢ ደይለቶ ስላዲን ሃውዞጎ ኢያ አ ዘ ኪጀና ንሽጊ ዲዲ ኮሊና ስኒጊ ኢ አ ስላዲን ሃውዞጎ ዘ ጨኮዳሊያ አዶን ሂዶ ደነኒ ክሊን navajo nation judo ze yije kodalia e shladin hao zogo e da ze sebije kodol ne queen zinde e bije kodalia da nikhito a a kui a h ze yije kodalia ado bande to bande to halita e ko a ti zegi likeni hinabije kodoli hatno le washington de e ya akhata hadati illa ti ti enel tegi e ya zel en dal nashj e sadole hadotni jo e a kwich likeni hinadi de kosin tsagi bedatonagi ya da halia jo e binach e e sadole hadati no አሁን አባዳስ ተንዘንጊ ተሼ ዶ ደንዘን ሼ ሃውሺን ታታኖ ሼ ዶ ታዳዝ ሰታዳን ታነ ጥይ ዶ እሺ አበበሁት አኮ አላ አኮ አላ እንልት አይኮኒ አዘል እንዳንልንጊ ዘ ለካጊ ዶ አስኮ ዘል እንጂ ዲ ኮስንስ ካጊ በዳቶ ላይ ይቂዳ ደስ እንጂ እ ላ ባዳስ አዶና ነኤ ያኮ የማሰን ይቼኒ ነልባዳ ያጅዶ አጅዶ እንዳነሽጊ ኤዶ ዘጭ ኩዳሊ አሮ ቀሬ ሀስታቲን ዶ ባሽላ ብላ ቢንዳ ኸይጊ ኤያ አ ኤዶ ሀዶኒ ሶ ኢሽንሳ ይስበዳዝ ዘ ኢጊ ኤያ ኮ አ ንኻዳልያ ንኻዳስት አ ጁንሌ ቱንስት ዝድና ሻሽ ሺና ቱንሽ ጅዳ ጭንዚጅ አ በቅድ ባሆጻጅዶ አጅዶ ንያ አጅ ዘል ኢን ዳዝነልጅ ያሄታን ዘን ያሄታ ነሰን ንኻዳስት ሲጊ አሄታ ሃናዳ ዘል እና ሻሄ ዳብዲ ዳብዶነ ታንሂደ ኖ ሶ ዘል እንደ ነ ስንጊ ይቄን ይነ ያ ሄ ታንዘ ነ ወጣ 
United Kingdom had no Ado Ade do Dinas Nigi Oyo Ah Kutza had no the Bahana. The Tsar Kutzagi, the Kosin Tragina has eight Ada O Edo Yego Nashni Hot Enan had no the Bahana. Abinina Kuti Chodas, Eya, the mask that Egi. So she should cut the shah of the choice to Nish in here. A hot up, cut the shah in Lego. Ado that none be guest here. The genie is better as in court for the shah. But ah, be guest here, not kiggle. A hot up, cut the shah. Nikido hot up. Did I not kiggle? To dash, eh? Skado should not hash one. So do bezenda. Do di ze nidi ye eliagi. I should a di nana leto nanda nana nana nasnegi nana. I should a ze kitchen and the shade of bezenda beach. Kudoshin ye zel in a ya ya dust kit or let me just on a day let on. Could you go to Howard Zoja? I doubt Bahane. Could you go Colorado? Be it. We are not that the any Nasni Nane. Be kitchen Nasni Gido Ajido Nasni had no other. By a kid, he could the never key up a card. The any Nasni to Shinigi at all could. あ、なしにと。あ、こっちとこっちに繋ぎなさいって言った。だ、何気あ、え、こう、あ、ビケジンでいっぱ。そう、あ、こっちにし、こう、で、ゼドに、ちんきだしてよ。こう、ただとか、
ਨਿਕੇ ਦਹਲਾ ਜੋ ਖਦੋ ਅ ਸ਼ੀਦੋ ਖਨਸਨੀ ਖਦੀ ਚੀਨ ਖਚੀ ਨੇ ਨਿਸ਼ਲੇ ਦਸ਼ਨੋ ਹਦਾ ਹਸਤੀ ਕੇ ਨਿਕਲ ਇਬਨੀ ਨਾ ਇਹ ਕਿਤਾ ਦਾ ਇਹ ਆਸ਼ਵਾਦ ਆਰੋ ਜੋ ਆਰੋ ਸ਼ੀ ਕਿਦ ਕੋ ਚੀ ਇਹ ਕਿਉ ਦੇ ਖੇਗੀ ਨ ਆ ਕੋਈ ਸ਼ੀ ਦਾ ਆ ਕਿਸ ਲੰਜ਼ਾ ਨਾ ਤਿੰ ਖਤਿੰ ਨਾ ਤਿੰ ਖਤਿੰ ਦਿਸ ਤਿੰ ਦਾ ਨ ਨਿਜ਼ਾ ਦਾ ਹਲਨ ਤਸ਼ ਮਸਨ ਦਾ ਨੋ ਦਾ ਆਇਤ ਇਹ ਹੋ ਇਹ ਯਾ ਉਹ ਅਸ਼ੀਨ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਨਾ ਨਾ ਸ਼ਤਾ ਮਸਨ ਅਤਾ ਹਲਿਆ ਹਾ ਇਸ਼ਨਸ ਜੋ ਹੋਤ ਆ ਇਹ ਯਾ ਇਸ ਕੇ ਦਾਦਾ ਅਸ ਕੇ ਦਾਦੇ ਥੀ ਤਨੇ ਨੀ ਕਲੀਨ ਤੋ ਇਨ ਹੀ ਜੋ ਬਾਇਨ ਸ਼ਕੇ ਕੋ ਤਨੇ ਬਕੇ ਯਾ ਪਕਾ ਉਹ ਕੇ ਦਾ ਹੋਤ ਨੀ ਕਾ ਨਾਚਾ ਅਸ਼ੀ ਆ ਆ ਕੋਲ ਸੋ ਦਨੇ ਕੇਚਨ ਹੀ ਜੋ ਹਸੀ ਦੋ ਦੇ ਸਟੋਬ ਲਗਾਨ ਸ਼ੀ ਕੁਜੇ ਆ ਬਿਲਗਾਨ ਕੇਚ ਸ਼ੀ ਆ ਚੀ ਸੋ ਗੋ ਜੋ ਆ ਨਾ ਕੋ ਜ਼ੈਲ ਇਨ ਦਨ ਲਨ ਗੀ ਦੋ ਸਿਲ ਦੇ ਦਨ ਲਨ ਗੀ ਕੋ ਸਾ ਨੀ ਜੋ ਹਦਾ ਸੀ ਤੋ ਲੋ ਪੀਚ ਆ wanted to transition to the english uh, language um 27665 thus far of uh, confirmed cases here on Navajo if you could put that uh powerpoint up and um we are 985 of our loved ones our relatives who lost their lives to covid-19 and um our, our our thoughts and prayers go out to every single family of our relatives and let us continue to pray for them please challenge you every morning i know many of you have done that but every morning to wake up and say a prayer for those that have lost um their loved ones to covid-19 and there are some others <clears throat> here on the Navajo Nation 14,000 I'm sorry here on the Navajo Nation 20 uh, 14,196 have recovered from covid-19 and I was watching a segment this morning there there's they said about about nationwide about 10% of those who have recovered have some long term health problems because of covid-19 and we just need to recognize that you know people think oh 14 days and you're going to be uh if you can get out of that you'll be okay no 10% i'm probably a lot more here on avo if we can do the statistics so the best thing to do is to follow protocol we'll wear your mask social distance wash your hands <clears throat> soap and water and stay home and we ask for your continued diligence in following through it i mean we got yes we got the vaccine but we still got to do the same things we I mean not everybody is vaccinated and uh let's continue to do what our public health experts are asking us to do please um i saw that there's a lot of uh people tuning in this morning and as you see the powerpoint those are the breakdowns you know there there's a lot of people that are listening in and i challenge those that are listening to share this information with your loved ones your relatives and the media that's watching to help us get the message out and we appreciate uh the daily updates from the media but i think it, overall throughout this country we need to stay the course and not let down sandy from smoke signals arizona junior lopez from kirtland um gilbert from rayma lloyd from alamo <clears throat> and i appreciate the radio stations um being uh on as well and airing the town hall meetings like KBR from Alamo get the message out that we can't let down don't let your guard down you know there's a new variant the UK variant that we've heard a lot about 
and <clears throat> we don't have any confirmed cases here on Navajo, but we see some in Colorado and New Mexico. <clears throat> so we need to stay the course, you know, and wear our masks, social distance, wash our hands, and stay at home. Mm -hmm. Stay at home. And our prayers were answered with the snow and the moisture that we received here um, on the Navajo Nation. Beautiful country. And I agree with a lot of the comments that are being made. And, um, we needed this moisture. If you look at the next PowerPoint, the PowerPoint screen there, uh, we have the, from the start of the pandemic, all the way to the end. And we show this uh, almost every town hall to give you a, a, a larger view of the work that you have all have done here on the Navajo Nation. And pushing back on the virus, you can see the first wave and we dip down into uh, the lower part of the uh, summer and the end of the summer at the lower cases. And then once we hit Labor Day, you okay. saw a big increase. You know, people started traveling. People started coming home. And it went, you know, we even just that little bit, that one weekend, just look at how quick this virus spread. And it took off in it. And we had a difficult time bringing those numbers down. And thank you for spreading the word about staying the course. And you can see towards the end, December, January, and, you know, because of the holidays as well, people traveling, <clears throat> all the states around us were at their all-time all highs. And we were like a little island, Navajo Nation, little island of all the red around us. Of course, you know, it's going to come in. And now... Based on yesterday's report, 87 positive cases in 24 hours. So you see the flattening of the curve. And I'm trying to not say we're on a downward trend. I know people are going to start saying that. But I'm trying to be cautious. But you can see the numbers starting to go down. First time in a while we have 87 cases uh, in 24 hours. So the next uh, slide there, uh, we also want to show, which um, you know, gives us uh, some glimpse into into the future. I know that the schools were brought up. The schools, uh, at least the Navajo, the Mexico um, education. Uh, department, New Mexico Public Education Department honors and respects the sovereignty of tribes. And we are still are online. We have stated that for the Navajo Nation, right? We don't have jurisdiction off the Navajo Nation, schools off the Navajo Nation, but we are pressing those school districts, that those facilities on the Navajo Nation are to remain online. And also for the students that they pick up on the Navajo Nation to go off the reservation, they should be also allowed to go online. The state of Arizona, you know, recently with the New Mexico uh, superintendent of public instructions and the governor, you know, they were a little bit at odds. And they want to open up as well. And we want to open up, but we want to do it safely. And we are uh, starting to vaccinate teachers. But of course, the students are also a priority. Our young students, our young people are a priority. Our, their safe and well-being is of utmost importance. So right now, the Navajo Nation has not changed its position. It is online courses, and that's where we're at right now with the, the education and the schools part. 
you look on the PowerPoint there, you you see the, the top one. Uh, the top there is Arizona at the top of the list of cases. The second one down, the red one, is Utah. The yellow one is the Navajo Nation. And then the next one af down below the Navajo Nation is New Mexico. And the last one down with the red is Colorado. So those are states surrounding us. So look at Arizona. Number one. I think they, a couple of weeks ago they said they were number one in the world. So we need to tell our relatives to be careful out there as well. You know, just to share with you, my uncle right now is uh, in the hospital because of COVID-19. So this virus has affected every single person on the Navajo Nation, including your president. I just ask for prayers for him and for many others that are in the hospitals fighting this, this, this virus. Let's continue to pray for them. The next one. As you know, we extended our executive order for two weeks. So the Navajo Nation employees are, except the essential employees, are to be at home. But we have reopened the weekends. Now, before you start commenting and, and saying why, this is the reason why. We have received much vaccination. And to this day, ladies and gentlemen, the Navajo Nation has received 58,183 doses. And we have put into the arms of our Navajo citizens 37,982, and this is as of uh, yesterday morning. That's 65% of our Navajo people who that have received the shots. That's a big percentage. That helps us uh, as leaders to advocate for more coming into the Navajo Nation. But I, when I was out there, I was out there in Thoreau and St. Michael, I mean, I'm sorry, Fort Defiance at the uh, Seoto Medical Center, Kayenta, Chinle, Tuba City, Pinyon, and today Sage Memorial. You know, what I've heard a lot is that our healthcare professionals, you know, they're, they are burning out. They've been doing this, man, over several months now. And now we put another task on top of them. Okay, they're doing the intake of COVID positive and our sick patients. They're also juggling the regular patients that they get. They're also doing testing, right? And now they're doing vaccinations. And so from Monday through Friday, that's what they do because of the weekend lockdown. And so they said, we could probably do more because more of the staff could be used on the weekends. So we reopened the weekend so that more vaccination drives and blitz can be done here on the Navajo Nation so that we can bring this percentage up so we can get as many people vaccinated. If there are 350,000 Navajos and we have vaccinated 37,000, that's a little bit over 10% of our population. So there's still quite a ways to go. And bless the hearts of our Navajo citizens who live off the nation that leave early. I've heard stories of people living in Albuquerque and Phoenix leaving one o'clock in the morning to get in line here on the Navajo Nation to get their vaccination. Getting in line at five and six in the morning. But you know, the states utilize the Native American population to get their vaccines. So some of those vaccines that are going to the states should be going to our Native American relatives because that's the population they're using. So they don't have to drive hours to get to the Navajo Nation. And so we're working with the states and I did send letters to them reminding 
asking them that they're using our data, they're using our population to get vaccines to the state of Arizona. We just want our share, right, of uh, vaccines. And those are things that we're, we're working on right now. So if you look at the vaccine there, uh, so the, 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 the information that I gave you earlier is an updated version than what you see here. But that, that kind of gives you the breakdown of the vaccinations. Look at on the left-hand side, Navajo Nation, total doses. It's actually 58,183. Total, dotus, total doses administered there, it says 32. This one says, the one I have uh, updated yesterday, 37,982. And that says 57, I have 65%. But look on the U.S. side, 53%. So we're doing, they're doing an outstanding job, the healthcare professionals. And I commend each and every one of them for uh, what they're doing. And I use this because this is public record because it's been used in giving updates to the schools and other uh, various groups that want an update. But let me just also say that we can't always be doing updates for every groups out there. These public health professionals need to be focusing on a lot of their attention on the public health emergency. Instead, various groups are telling us, we want an update, we want, I tell them, just come to the town hall, we do an update. Same information that's given. And we need every single body to be fighting, especially now that there's a new variant, right? Especially now that we need to do vaccinations, we need every healthcare professional helping in these uh, events, either shots or vaccinations. Next slide. So weekends, this weekend will be opened up. And, uh, we will provide the, uh, the uh, updated um, vaccination sites to our website soon. This morning, I heard the uh, White House briefing, C-19 briefing. There, they're predicting by the end of the summer, 300 million people will be vaccinated. The other interesting thing I heard on the news this morning is the UK variant. The preliminary uh, information that we're receiving is that the UK variant could uh, be a lot stronger and could be a lot more contagious. And also the vaccine that we're getting right now may be less effective. Effective, yeah. And so those are preliminaries and they're still studying that. So that means we're not out of this pandemic just yet. I mean, these are good news, yes, but we have to be transparent to let you know what these public health experts are saying for this new incoming administration. And that is why genomic surveillance is very important for us here on Navo. So that, and we also need all the information to be consolidated so that we as leaders know and can advocate on the entire Navajo people's behalf. And you see the PowerPoint there as you see the progression from uh, throughout the, the Navajo Nation. Going all the way up in uh, November, as I said, once we hit Labor Day, it, it, once this thing spreads highly, it's hard to bring the numbers back down, as you can see right there. And so it's best that we keep the numbers down and keep telling our family members to not visit us. Look at what Arizona, I just showed you the Arizona numbers. Those are relatives that are in Arizona. And we just ask you, now, now it's not the time because we don't know. And those people may get a test, yeah, but 
Are they quarantining themselves before they come home on Avon? We don't know that. But we see the downward trend, as mentioned by many. But I call it the flattening of the curve, because we're not out of this uh, this yet. So that's uh, pretty much where we're at. I wanted to give you an update uh, on where we're. And lastly, I think Vice President did uh, mention the uh, um, relief checks. Relief checks are, are being uh, sent out. And so if you have any questions, call the Office of the Controller. She's administrating that. Um, I know a lot of questions come up to us. Where's my check? Um, that question should be asked to the Office of the Controller, please. Um, thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the prayers for our first responders. We just appreciate the hard work that everybody's been doing. We need to all pitch in. We need to all pitch in, every single one of us, pitch in. How do we pitch in? Stay home as much as you can. And I know somebody's going to say, well, I can't because hold each other accountable. That's the only way we're going to get out of this uh, high rates of COVID-19 on the Navajo Nation. You know, and some of you will say, same old, same old. Well, if this is same old, same old, then we should be listening. We should be listening and honoring our mother and father, grandparents, our elders. They have sacrificed much for all of us today to be where we're at. They've gone through some tough times, but they, they persevered, they overcame to get us to where we're at right now. A self-sufficient nation. Aho. Aho do a shot that need and that get on. Nihil Masando, Nihil Chain, Kenala Nasta's Lingi, Ashka and Da Jaho. A hot out a ya con Ashko. A da ilan ha, a name de Craig. A name de Craig, that do that is it, sir. I shall have let him get a condal in here, or be can deal with her. I shall be nina. Do that's in his deed, I don't know, it's in his yada, hit on there. She must send she mother, she said, I don't know, that was cage, she yet she out, she yaho, she yaho. A D J B Benashni. So D B Yash Tigi or Shishan Tinit Air as you can of him. Near Masanya, Nihichi than Lene. Nihina Taini than Lene, Ebena and Tinigi, Nasi Tiot, Ashkeji. A Dino Sneha Nene, Ena and Tin. A cocoon has chin eight at the end as it has been a hard no. Miller had a shed a hon, Nessa, Washington, the other hon, Nessa, could the Daria Yatas hit as neat, never care for card. Hala hot za winds. Clacon, he must son, he chained in the lock, could I name there ya? Miller had a shed at the hon, Nessa, could the hook up. Ada ha ni stod les naso ha ne ne ada ze ni wins a kon de ni hin ni kias la ani tsko de ni clean a big ha yan da kregi a tsod binti yan da kre ni hi kon de ni ni clean ni kis ha ot zoj a a ni hi ni hi na hat hallo ni hi ot ins ni hallo ni hi zal hallo na anti ni hi chak ada ya keben nacha. A band that needs him. Sure, 
nene ada biga da da nene ena antiniki nas kuda di nilt shno de shno sh chikero shne ada da isno tsagi chuna kha kha ta ni tsuno ada di ne doe o biga da di ni da na ani ni tlingi kha kha ni tsuno e bini na da di ne chusa e do da is tsa da ko amado je che masana nano no tlingi ขดอหนแอนอันคเนขดอนขาลชินยิโซเคนนะลิเคปิเจกุตาเลอาชวดเยฮะดาอัลนีดอเลเยตะบิซีดอเลอาอันนีอะดานะตันฮิลนีดอ
talking to people um, at work or either at home or when someone is visiting or at the grocery store is all recommended. And then continue to practice good hygiene practices by washing your hand for 20 seconds and also um, wiping down and cleaning high touch surface areas and um, wherever you are around and about during the day um, at work or in your vehicle or at home or remote controls refrigerator door handles, your doorknobs, things like that are very important to continue to keep um, as a way of preventing the transmission of COVID-19. Also, as another reminder is when you're waiting for test results and if you are showing or not showing symptoms, please continue to stay at home and properly quarantine because if you were in contact with someone that um, tested positive, you still need to quarantine for 14 days. That doesn't mean that you try to get a negative test right after you find out if you were exposed because it won't let you know um, that you have may likely or get COVID because some of those take a couple of days to develop. We've often shared some of those images um, regarding Jane or Henry on our on presentation here. After they attend a holiday party, it takes a while um, for the individual to um, experience signs and symptoms. So always stay home even uh, while you're te uh, waiting for test results. Um, doesn't mean that if you test negative and you were a close contact, just continue to maintain um, preventive measures. And also while you're at home, while you go to work too, all of these preventive measures are very important as well. And staying home when you're sick is one of them. And even though it might be flu, it might be COVID, it might be allergies, those are very important um, flu-like symptoms that need to be monitored and you come, and you should not come to work. So we also document um, workplace exposures here on the Navajo Nation and in a bit I'll show you where to report that information if there is an exposure. So it's very important um, to stay home when you're sick, um, don't report to work. On the Navajo Department of Health webpage, you'll see a tab there that says report exposure. It's um, in the new public health order that is currently active. We're asking businesses or either customers or anybody um, that is aware of an exposure at any place of business on the Navajo Nation to report a potential COVID-19 exposure so that we can properly provide assistance to the individuals that are exposed and get them connected to the local health facility and also ensure that the business does practice safety measures if there is a potential exposure. And then now that we're talking about vaccines, it's always important to um, understand where we're at. We're still in phases um, 1A through C. And right now we are in phase 1B. This will take a while to accomplish because it's a majority of our population, but the priority across um, the different health facilities is really dependent on the amount of vaccines they have and also their population characteristics. As you know, on Navajo, we, um, we might have different um, population characteristics and for a smaller clinic versus a larger hospital, and they might take longer to vaccinate those that are 65 years and older but these are some priorities that we identified using the CDC recommendations that they received from the um, ACIP re recommendations as well. And in order to streamline communication for hospitals, we do have a registry. We're trying to work with um, making that more available and for individuals to be aware of to assist in scheduling appointments. But the vaccine is here, so please be patient as we continue to receive vaccines um, through the Indian Health Service or the state, getting it to thousands across the Navajo Nation will be ch a challenging process. We encourage everyone to be patient um, as healthcare workers, first responders, elders, high-risk patients, spiritual leaders, and essential workers um, will receive the vaccine before the general population. Remember, it's still important to continue wearing a mask and all the preventive measures after you get vaccinated as well. And then how long does the vaccine take to work? So immunity takes a few weeks to build up. A second dose, um, it takes like three to four weeks after the first dose as well, depending on the vaccine you get in order to get um, as much protection as you can. So just know that 
it's very important to get your second dose um, when you are uh, wherever you get your vaccine. Going back to the same location is recommended and also possibly where you um, receive most of your health services as well. Also, there are similarities and differences in the Moderna and Pfizer. Of course, um, both of them are in sim are similar structures, but their age um, categories are quite different. Pfizer starts at 16 and Moderna starts at 18. Their second dose requirements vary a little bit, but other than that, they're both safe and effective across gender, age, and race. So just understand that these are available. And so you may not have a choice when you are going to the health facility, they'll, you'll be provided what is on hand uh, and available um, for you as well. So just to let everyone know that there is um, those options and there are gonna be new options in the future that we're gonna have to just think about. And this is the registry on the Navajo Department of Health by working with the individual um, appointments or those that are interested is our purpose of having a registry as well. So just to let everyone know that it's very important to um, understand that vaccine access is challenging. We are not um, getting enough um, vaccines right now, but eventually we will. And so if you reside on the Navajo Nation, it's important to work with your local health facility. If you don't reside on the Navajo Nation, you're probably accounted for in either the city or state allocations, which is also another option for you. So know that you can reach out to your local health department web pages and also the state health department to access vaccines in states like the state of Utah. Um, they are reaching out to like the Urban Indian Health Center and another location there in the Wasatch area for individuals to access vaccines through um, agencies or organizations that serve the Indian, urban Indian population, um, American Indian population in those metro areas. So look for ways to access the vaccine um, in the areas that you reside or live in is very important as well. And so on Navajo, we are trying to um, address those that are here and that um, we, we know that not everyone will have access to the vaccine immediately based on the prioritizations that we have. And it's also still very important that the safest place is at home. And so we still have a shelter in place here on the Navajo Nation. That means individuals out and about are only um, driving around to seek essential services um, throughout the entire week. And so that has not been lifted um, because the numbers still remain um, somewhat high, but not as high as we were a couple of weeks ago. So in order to maintain that, we just ask everyone to continue to um, take care of yourself and others by practicing all of those preventive measures that I mentioned. And then also wanted to just say thank you for listening this afternoon. So next I want to go ahead and introduce Ms. Um, Rosalind Sow, she's the director for the um, Navajo Area um, Indian Health Service. And thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Jim, and thank you for that, as well as uh, President and Vice President. Thank you for this time. Uh, before I give my report, and because we have other pressing uh, calls, I'm going to turn over to Dr. Christensen so she can uh, proceed with the rest of her day after she does her presentation. Dr. Christensen? Uh, thank you, Ms. So. Good morning, everyone. It's um, an honor to be with you again today. Uh, I'm Dr. Lori Christensen. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for the Navajo Area IHS. Um, I thank uh, uh, President Nez and Dr. Jim for uh, the information that they've presented to you today, and I just want to add a little um, extra information to that. Uh, we are, as President said, over 37,000 vaccinations, and I think when we um, uh, reconcile yesterday's numbers, we'll be clearly over 40,000. Um, we have been fortunate that we get a supply of vaccination every week. Uh, we received almost uh, 5,900 doses for this week, and we're expecting um, about uh, 6,400 for next week. 
Uh, so that helps us plan ahead and we can get it, more people in for their vaccinations. I do want to thank everybody who has stepped up for their vaccination. This is so important to get as many of our people vaccinated in a timely and efficient manner. I do want to emphasize to you that you should ask at the time of your first uh, dose when your second dose will be, and they have been telling you, but please ask if you don't hear, and make sure that you come in for the second dose. It's very, very important that we finish both doses because we don't reach the maximum protection until the second dose is given. Uh, there's been a lot of questions about what to expect with the vaccinations. Uh, this is what we know. If you have been COVID positive and you get your first vaccination, you may have more side effects than other people that are getting the vaccination. Thus far, the side effects have been a sore arm, mild redness at the site, and some tiredness. You need a little bit of extra rest. This may be a little more uh, intense for those who have been COVID positive. When we give the second dose, of your vaccination 21 to 28 days later, depending on which vaccine you received, you tend to get a little bit more side effect with the second dose if you've never had COVID. Again, we all we've heard about is a sore arm, some fatigue, a little redness at the site of the injection, um, and some headache from time to time. But it's very self-limited. The majority of these effects only last one at the most two days. And uh, it may be similar to a reaction you, you get after getting a flu vaccine. It's very common with vaccinations because they are creating an immune response in your body and we want your body to respond and create protection for you. Uh, Dr. Jim showed you a, a beautiful slide on the vaccine registry. Uh, please use the registry. This helps us get your name and your, your data concerning where you work, where you live, where you get your care. We can then take that data and work with your healthcare facility where you get your care and let them know this list of people that are waiting for a vaccination. Please be very patient with us because we have, we're doing thousands of vaccines a week. Um, and we want to make sure that we get to you, but we have to plan with the doses we have to get the events set up to get you there to get your vaccination. I can't thank you enough for those of you who have waited in line. Uh, it shows how committed you are to protecting yourself and your family and your community. And we're trying to be uh, more efficient each time we do this and get you through our lines as fast as possible. Uh, we have set up a bunch of mass vaccinations around the area and we do have those that schedule available and we will try to let all these groups in the registry know when to come so that that facility is ready for you. We don't want to run out of vaccinations for you so we're trying to plan accordingly with the doses we have. Uh, it is very, very important that we still wash our hands watch our distance and wear our masks, along with the variants that you now see in the news that, that may come into our area, over 40% of people who have COVID don't know it. So you could be walking around, feel fine and have COVID and possibly expose your family or friends or people that you come in contact with. So it's vitally important that we do both the public health measures with our masks and keeping our distance and washing our hands as it is for you to get your vaccination. So please continue to do this. Please don't have big gatherings. Please don't go to events and make sure that you're following all of our public health measures when you do have to go out of your home. One other thing I wanted to let you know is that we hope with this new push for vaccinations nationally that we'll get a larger amount of vaccinations to the Navajo area. We have a very excellent capacity to hold these vaccinations for the Pfizer vaccination, which requires the ultra freeze refrigerators. We can hold over 80,000 doses 
And for the Moderna, we have excellent capacity for well over 100,000 doses because these are our regular pharmacy refrigerators that we can store the Moderna. We have asked for some increase in Moderna doses because these are the doses that go out to the healthcare clinics such as Pinon and uh, Lachi and uh, I House in uh, Four Corners and DZ because they don't have the, the big freezers, they can keep the Moderna. So this is good news for us that we're gonna get extra Moderna next week. And that will allow those healthcare clinics across both tribal, federal and urban to give more vaccinations. So we're very happy about that change in, uh, in the vaccines that we're getting for next week. So in summary, we are doing a very good job of getting these vaccines out. Um, with the possibility of additional vaccines, we will be ramping up for bigger events. Uh, we have the support, which Ms. So will talk about, from some other entities that will greatly help us with our logistics. And if we can get that additional support, we'll be able to deliver a, a higher number of vaccines every time we have an event. And, and I do thank uh, the president for giving us the opportunity to give vaccinations on the weekend. We've done a couple of events and we've had excellent turnout for the people that work or just can't get there during the week. We'll be able to get you in for your vaccinations on the weekend. So that, that is very much appreciated. Um, I thank every one of you for staying safe and protecting your families. Thank you for stepping up and getting your vaccination. And, and you are the reason that we get through these COVID waves that we've endured. And uh, it's, it's really the people of Navajo that make the difference. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Christensen, for that. Again, this is Rosalind So. I'm the Area Director for the Navajo Area Indian Health Service. Thank you for the opportunity to provide additional updates to you. Um, on a regular basis, of course, we, we are uh, working with our team members. I also want to do a shout out to all of our healthcare system on the Navajo Reservation. It is quite impressive when you're able to sort of step back and look at the progress that we're making, the coordination, the comprehensive uh, approach that we're taking to, to doing the best that we can for you. And as part of that, I wanted to share with you, uh, some of you have not seen or, or um, looked at the IHS mission recently. I wanted to share that with you. And it says the Indian Health Service is to raise the physical, mental, social, and spiritual health of American Indians and Alaska Natives to the highest level. And so as we go through this process, we continue to remind our staff that this is what our mission is. This is why we're here. And part of that is the Navajo Nation allowing the Indian Health Service to continue to provide the health care services to our people here. And, and I just cannot say enough about that. That means uh, more than those words, it's everything that we do and say moving forward. And as we have been trying to address our patient um, through this very difficult time. Also, we all know that there's been a change in administration recently. And um, as part of that, there's also changes in the Indian Health Service at the national level and throughout IHS. And effective uh, January 20th, uh, Ms. Liz Fowler is, has been named to be the acting IHS director, and she will have additional communication with us as we walk through this transition and as the, as the, um, the new administration names their new uh, IHS director. So we, we will continue to share information with you as it relates to that. Also, all of you have heard that there was a Corona bus, that's what we're referring to it as a fifth supplement uh, to assist with the uh, COVID-19. And so Indian Health Service is, is working on the distribution of those resources to all of the IHS areas. As soon as we get it, we have a very quick turnaround time to get those funds to our tribal partners, the 638 programs, and we will continue to, to do that as well and make sure we work through that. IHS uh, in the Navajo area has also been working very dis diligently to name our um, hospital uh, CEOs throughout Navajo area. We've had 
three vacancies at the beginning of, of 2020. So they are all in place now, which is again, critical to our operation as we continue to move forward and make sure that we have the right people in the right jobs to help us, uh, to help lead us through this uh, pandemic. And also making sure that we continue to provide care through um, through the services that we that we are trusted to do so. As far as tribal partnerships, again, uh, there's a there we continue Indian Health Service continues to be part of the unified command group. This is a group of federal and tribal uh, health systems, health groups that allow us to plan and and make sure that there, all the needs of the healthcare center is in place. And so a lot of communication there, many times led by uh, President Nez himself, which is quite impressive when you think about the, the amount of work that I'm sure um, that our tribal leaders have. So there is a massive amount of coordination that happens and we appreciate that, that support continued uh, from the Navajo Nation. As part of that support, we've been very fortunate to be able to uh, request staff support through the Navajo Nation, and this is this is the process that we use to make sure that we can get to either public health officers, um, Department of Defense staff, uh, and and so forth. And so currently, we have uh, ten public health nurse behavioral excuse me public health service behavioral health staff that are on, in route. To Navajo area. These uh, 10 uh, officers are, we've been using these 10 officers to support our federal staff and making sure that, you know, we're addressing the, the uh, mental and, and social needs of our staff. And again, it, it just reciting the the um, or citing the the mission of the Indian Health Service, it's it's really talking about making sure we're protecting ourselves as well as each other, and that is our goal. We also have um, five public health nurses that are in route or should have arrived yesterday at Gallup Indian Medical Center. We have twelve public health service laboratory specialists that are at each of our federal sites. We have thirty four Army and Navy critical care nurses that are at three of our federal sites and six uh, Army Navy respiratory technicians that are also on the ground. And this is quite impressive. It really describes the amount of work that's going on in our hospitals to make sure that we, we are uh, sufficiently staffed to, to provide, um, to address the, the requests and needs of our patients. Uh, additionally, our um, public health uh, department in our area office, our health promotion and disease prevention has set aside um, a, a wear red day and we're hoping that you will join us as well and this is coming up in early February so we want to make sure that we are aware of the um, the heart disease that plagues many of our um, patients and so we will share that information widely and hope that you will join us on that. There's been a lot of conversation regarding um, COVID-19 vaccine. We get to see um, a lot of the work that's going on. Last week, I was traveling with the president to see one of our sites. It is pretty impressive to see how well our teams are working, even in the cold weather. Um, it was very cold out in Kianta last week, but we were able to observe just the amount of coordination and support and sort of excitement of the staff to be able to get the the uh, vaccines into the arms of our, our patients. And then I also wanted to share that in spite of everything that we've been going through, uh, we've been able to enhance our telemedicine uh, services to all of our patients. And so we have we can see that through the numbers that we're able to provide. Just to give you an idea, in 2019, we used uh, telemedicine for 110 visits. For, for individual patients. In 2020, we, we were able to move that up to 32,000 visits in uh, 2020. So what that means for our patients is that, you know, is that they might be, we might be able to provide more care through telemedicine and maybe our patients don't have to physically travel to our facilities. So we're constantly looking at ways to make sure that we make things better and that we're improving our system, our services to the Navajo people, to the Navajo area and, and to the Navajo nation. And um, with regards to the vaccine, again, a lot of coordination, we're getting support, we're getting requests 
from um, resources outside of the Navajo Nation that are asking us to help with the um, mass vaccinations that, that we are we are planning and, and that will occur. Uh, last weekend, just to give you an example, the Gallup Indian Medical Center planned for 600 vaccinations on Saturday. They did um, 839 total. So we know that our patients want this vaccine, want the vaccine in their arms to protect themselves. And so we're, we're gearing up our teams to make sure that we are able to meet your needs. So as has been reported, we know there's not enough yet, but we are also hearing that there is there could be more vaccine coming to the Navajo Nation. So that is good news for us. And while we are seeing the numbers go in the right direction uh, with regards to positive cases, again, just reminding you to wear your mask, practice our social distance and wash your hands. So I want to thank you again very much for the opportunity to provide this update and I'll turn it over to Dr. Va. Thank you. Hi, good Hi. afternoon. Thank you, um, Director So, and thank you so much um, to everybody here on our call with our leadership and the President's office, as well as with our um, COVID leadership and uh, Dr. Jim and team. And of course, thank you to everybody out there in our Facebook community for joining us and uh, week after week and listening to our updates. And so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and really capture everything It just discussed um, in regards to where we are with our cases, um, testing, um, hospital capacity, as well as uh, vaccination efforts. And so I am sharing my screen now. And the, the time period that is being presented here is between the last two weeks of um, January 8th through January 21st. And so as I noted earlier, I will cover um, where we are in cases, our current trends, how we compare to the United States, um, gives a brief information on testing, as well as hospital capacity, public health capacity, and discuss, discuss our vaccine efforts here and how we are doing in comparison to the US. And what does that, with the new variants, with all the evolving information out there, what can we do? What can you do to better protect yourself? And so here is our epi curve. And this gives us the broad overview of what happened at the beginning of the epidemic from March to now. But we are just going to focus in on the second surge. And as President Nez and a team has discussed, where we are right now is that we you know, we have implemented several different interventions, including the shelter in place order, um, encouraging continued mask use, social distancing, um, as well as washing your hands. And, and since Thanksgiving, there was no Thanksgiving bump, but at this point we can say that we did have an impact from this uh, seasonal impact from Christmas and New Year's. Um, and finally, we are starting to see real early signs of a downtrend. This is what we are seeing nationally as well. And so what the Navajo Nation is experiencing is indeed mimicking what we're seeing nationally, where there's starting to be a slowdown and some relief out there, especially for our um, public health systems and hospital systems. And so as shared with you prior, you know, what you see here is that you see the Navajo Nation in orange, and then you see the United States in blue. And there really is a, a relief happening across the U.S. and most of those states and regions, as well as here in Navajo Nation. One way to indicate that is that this next slide that I'm showing is just a regional map, right? And so it provides in color what's happening in the four states in Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, and in Colorado, as well as the um, eight general um, catchment areas, service units, and service areas. And you see here that it's all red. When you, If you came to our platform before, there used to be purple. Um, and so this is good. It went from purple to red. Red is still a high burden, so we're not where we want to be just yet. But at least, again, there is some you know, promising signs of a relief happening now and out there. Um, Navajo Nation did drop in rank from 21st to 22nd. 
Um, and again, this just supports what we are experiencing here, that there is early signs of a decrease, uh, a decrease in numbers of cases. Um, Arizona is leading, um, followed by Utah, as, and then Navajo Nation, and then you have New Mexico and Colorado. But generally speaking, all the states, including Navajo Nation, um, is starting to experience a decrease in cases. And so with this next table, some of the emphasis I just want to show you is, again, supporting that we are indeed seeing a decrease in cases, is if you're just looking at the 30-day trend and just looking at the curves for each of these areas, these eight service areas, you see that either it's plateauing or it's going down, which is a huge improvement from the prior weeks. Our test positivity, if you're looking by area, you can see all test positivities are starting to go down as well. We're not less than 10% where we want to be, but again, it's much better than what we've been seeing over the last week where some of these areas were approaching 30 to 40%. As you can see here, you know, it ranges from 12 to 23%, um, all going down. Now, our outbreak, you know, how fast is transmission happening? Our Outbreak is doubling in size. In order for it to double in size, it's taking 116 days. At the beginning of our second surge, we saw this outbreak grow so fast. It was doubling every, almost like every seven to eight days. And now it's taking 116 days. So that just tells me that it really is slowing down out there in terms of how fast it's spreading. Um, the other promising marker is what we calculate as RT or the infection rate. And if this is less than one, what it means that is everybody with COVID-19 um, spread, if you have COVID-19, your chances of ex um, effectively transmitting to disease to another person is less than one. So you transmit to less than one person. Um, and that's good. It means that it looking forward that we would expect to see fewer cases. And so our infection rate is 0.76, which is clearly less than one. Our test positivity for all of Navajo Nation is currently at 18%. This has gone down um, from the mid 20s that we previously have seen in prior weeks. So again, all these markers are heading in the right direction. Uh, and we hope that this continues. And then the other indicator that we do look at is ICU beds. And so we do know that with any wave, any surge, you would see the surge in cases first. And then there is a delay. There's a delay of like, you know, four to six weeks where you would see it in an increase in hospitalizations. And so we do watch that closely as well as an increase in deaths that tends to follow later, weeks later. And so with our hospitalizations, if you're just looking at the table to the right, the green curve represents all of Navajo Nation, all the facilities, whether it's a tribal health or health organization or IHS, is that we are hovering around that 80% threshold in regards to the percent of staffed ICU beds. And so we do know that we are monitoring this closely and we want to make sure that here in Navajo Nation that we are able to treat our sickest individuals and provide them with the quality of care that they deserve and need. Um, and so we're currently around that 80% threshold where it, it still stresses the system. And so again, the emphasis of why we need to do everything that we're doing right now and continue to do it. Um, hospitalizations across the four states, very similarly, we may not see this let up just yet, um, just because it, it does, there's a delayed impact on hospitalizations. And so across New Mexico, Arizona, and um, in Utah, you still see that a lot of ICU beds um, are really, you know, at beyond 80% full. And so there's still, the hospital system is still under stress. For contact tracing, um, for our public health approach and part of our public health response, Navajo Nation has increased the number of contact tracers to 425. Ideally, you want five contact tracers for every daily new case, um, but we are making improvements on this, and we're currently at three contact tracers for every daily new case. And the role of those contact tracers is if you were to be, ex they follow the cases very slow, very closely, and, and if you were to become exposed, it's our job to call and let you know that you have been exposed and these are the precautions that you need to take to protect yourself and your family. 
Um, now, with vaccines. So this, this slide here gives us a comparison uh, between the United States in the Navajo Nation. We know also as part of our public health response efforts, vaccination is very key in trying to get this outbreak under control. In the United States, in blue, what you see is that th there's been more than 44 million doses distributed. Of those 44 million doses, 24 million have been administered. And so 53% of these doses delivered to areas have been administered to people. Now, on Navajo Nation, as of the 26th, there's been 58,000 doses distributed, delivered to Navajo Nation and IHS, um, 37, 38,000 doses administered. And so that what that means is that we've been able to administer 65% of the doses that we receive that goes directly into people. So we are performing higher than the national average at this point. Um, so in conclusion, where are we right now? We still remain at phase zero. All promising trends, um, all the efforts are going to be ongoing um, in regards to our public health strategy, but it's still phase zero just because of the high burden of cases. Um, and so how does this compare uh, in regards to everyone else? How does Navajo Nation um, compare to the United States? I think this is this table here, one of the things I want to emphasize is, is this is how we compare, compare, is that again, when you look at this, you'll see that Arizona is in, you know, dark red with um, severe outbreak. That's because Arizona is ranking higher. Um, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, Navajo Nation, and Arizona as well. There, are, there is some relief out there and cases are going down. Um, and you see the infection rate for all of these areas, including Navajo Nation, have become less than one. So we know we're expecting to see even fewer cases in the next week. Um, and then lastly, one thing I do want to point out is that we are tracking relatively how we're doing in terms of the percent of the population that is getting vaccinated with at least one dose. And so you see here, for example, Arizona is reporting that 4.2% of their population has already initiated immunization with one dose. Here in Navajo Nation, that, that estimate is tentatively around 7 to 8% of the population here on Navajo Nation has received at least one dose, and we will continue to track that. Um, and we hope to see that number go, um, go much higher. Um, in regards to risk, so what is the current risk now? And I'm just gonna go to the counties. And so if you see this map by counties, you'll start to see that they're, again, very similarly, like I said, cases are starting to go down across the US, across the Navajo Nation. And so you do see more orange, yellow, and green. Um, and less of that dark blood red. And so, and you see that in our four corner region as well. And so those are very promising signs. But other trends to be very aware of, and I do see that everyone's talking about this as well, is the newer strains and what that might mean. And so the CDC does track at least um, the, the UK version, the, the British version. Um, and what we do understand is that that strain You'll hear it. They're saying that it's that it has higher, you know, it it has um, it has higher transmission opportunities, right? And so what that means is that it just spreads a lot faster and easier to people, causing disease in people. Um, and so at this point, it has been identified in more than twenty states. And if you notice, it's been identified in across the West Coast, right? From California to Washington. It's in our four corner region. It has been identified in three of those states, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. Um, and so what does that mean to everybody else and what we're doing? So these new, and then I should also mention that the Brazilian strain has been identified in Minnesota. And so what that means is this, is that we still want to, va the vaccine program is going to be a huge part of this response still. Um, and we want to vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible, given our supply. And so that will be con a continued effort. Um, the other piece to this is that containment of this outbreak is really critical at this point, because what you want to do is you still want to reduce the opportunity for transmission and cases. And what that means is that if you have less cases, then there's less opportunity for this virus to mutate. Um, 
and that you know and that's what we're aiming for right um in regards to the already existing mutations that we are aware of um there's still a lot to be you know there's a lot of unknown still one vaccines are not 100 percent effective but they're close to it right 95 94 percent effective with two doses so as everyone's been saying encouragement of two doses is really critical here um, but what that means right now that they're still studying that we don't know is that even if you get the vaccine it does not guarantee you from not getting COVID-19. If anything, it reduces your chances of getting COVID-19. And should you get COVID-19, the symptoms are less severe. The other thing we don't know is, is if you do get COVID-19 after, after vaccination, we don't know if you can transmit that to others. And that's still being studied. And so that's why we still emphasize everything that we're emphasizing right now with the mask, ventilation, et cetera. On top of that, with these newer strains, there's still a lot of unknowns about what these strains mean in regards to vaccine effectiveness and transmission, right? And so that's why at this point, what you wanna do to protect yourself and your family is to reduce your chances of transmission. And so if these strains are highly more highly transmissible, then you reduce those opportunities. And what do I mean by that? Universal mask wearing for sure, um, and before the message has been wearing a mask to protect others, which is still true, but now you need to focus on the quality of masks to protect yourself. And so what that indicates is that really quality of mask is really key. And so you're thinking of a KN95 and N95. Um, I know that I've heard double masking, anything to reduce your chances of having, getting COVID-19, okay? And at the very bottom, you know, highly, highly would recommend against cloth masks in terms of quality. Now, social distancing and indoor ventilation, again, focusing on reducing opportunities of transmission, right? And so anything indoors is even riskier with these more transmissible strains. And so you want to, if it's not your home, you want to really not be in, or at work, you really don't want to be indoors for a prolonged period of time. Um, and then the other, the other point to that is ventilation. Ventilation will be a key, um, a key point in, in trying to reduce opportunities of transmission. And so, you know, um, ventilation in the workplace, ventilation in stores, um, ventilation when carpooling, all of that are, will be really key at this point. And so vaccine, get your vaccine when, when your time is here um, and then focus on the quality of masks as well as the time that you're spending indoors and what the, the ventilation system is like. Thank you. And now I'll hand this over to Dr. Fowler. Thank you, Dr. Ba. Yeah. Yeah, Cotus a whole year, Ada is in a sha, Ado a ya, Tagaho Zangi a nationish, Ado Telade, a tato, not only it lini archbishop eat little, the nest we son needs a cage decay, they initiate archbicketin she, a cocky hen, he didn't need all the Ada had that so gizzy, gido, that is in a sai, shady, cotto, Ada nick at your shape, but not hush net all the. Hashine last we saw in Lenny Sakuja, not a kiss, Ado Ahota Ajapa, not a kiss, each or a shame in Naja Aya Kodo, Adenik Eja Kodo, Ben Hilhashna Dole, Ado Doshik et O Tiho, a Betahos Ashik Edo Shedene, Halan Hizad, Lenny A. Edes Nito, Hashim Sago Bay. Be 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 ni se do be ha ni ne akob e shi be na che e be ta hos a to le ko do e ni de a be da ne zna de ko e ko jo a an ta hui ne a hui che na an i ch le de na an ke se ke ni do a ze is in da le ni it's easy da an ni hi do ch le de na an i da le ni ko do yen hi che ha da zi. A quidje, 
ขอเดตะเลอัลลาฮฺจะอึซซิกขอสะนซะอินซิอิลเคสกอตะอะกอดีขอดอนเฮเซอิลอินเนลินีตะทุคริสเตียนซินอดอาเอดีอิเซอิ
اتیس نغاج اتیغا تیه تا انیهین لی آخاشی نلاشی آنی ای تیه نی یهین نل آدچ این نتاتولیه چه آخاشی سگ آج زه اینی یه تا انیه یه تا انیه نزنا ای آدم خشت هیچ دیکاس تو تو چه آدم از نیکای تو اشتلاد آو ای تو آدم آدم دیتیس دین ای یا آخاشی لاتی ای ตลาดสดอันนี้เอ็ดอาเดนก็อันเห็นนี่ก็อันตัดจะต้องเห็นได้นี่อ่ะก็เขียนให้ตัวบางเห็นสันติภาษาอังกฤษก็อ่านนี
Ja, <laughs> Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefühlt, wie ich mich gefühlt habe. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefühlt, wie ich mich gefühlt habe. Ich habe mich nicht mehr so gut gefühlt, wie ich mich